It's just in to CBS Sports HQ. The Christian McCaffrey era is over in Carolina. The Panthers trading their start running back to the San Francisco 49ers late Thursday in exchange for a boatload of draft picks. It had been rumored the Panthers were listening to offers from McCaffrey and had already told a few teams no. But the deal ends a six-year run with the Panthers for the 26-year-old where he became the fastest player in league history to reach 3,000 rushing yards and 3,000 receiving yards. In terms of the trade particulars, in return for McCaffrey, the Panthers received 2023 20, second, third, and fourth round picks, plus a fifth rounder in 2024. 49ers face the Chiefs at Levi Stadium this week. McCaffrey could make his debut in a limited capacity. Now, Panthers general manager Scott Fitterer speaking with the media Friday following the trade. Let's send you there to take a listen. All right. Um, so it's been a busy, you know, really last 48 hours when this all, you know, picked up. Uh, just to give you some background, uh, the first call that we received with an offer was last Friday, and it was you know not something that we would consider. Uh, went through the game, went through the weekend, and then uh, really picked up Tuesday, like Tuesday mornings when teams got involved, started calling, and that's when we uh, discussed internally as a group, uh, you know, would we do this? If we do it, what's acceptable? And we kind of put a value on it. And then at, at that point, we worked through it. We talked to the teams. Um, you know, a couple of teams didn't have first round picks, you know, that we thought, you know, in that area was probably the right area for Christian with uh, regarding everything. Um, so they, it complicated it that there wasn't a first round pick to be had. So we had to figure out what's the equivalent of a first round pick, if that's the case. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of teams did have a first round pick. Uh, they never got there. It was never an option for them. So it was going to be a combination of, of something. Um, what that was, was very fluid. Uh, that was the, really the talk over the last 40, 48 hours. So with that, you know, we got to a point where uh, two teams were pretty serious, um, went back and forth with them. And then it just got to a point where we thought this is what was best for the organization moving forward, that this is the right move. It's a, it's a tough move because when you have someone of Christian's, you know, stature in the community, the type of player he is, the type of person he is, it's, it's really tough to, to move on from him. Um, a great guy, yeah, really handled it well. But really for the organization, uh, moving forward, we felt it was the right decision and the right value for what we have uh, planned moving forward. So with that, um, I'll open up to questions. Scott, um, you guys are one in five. You just traded away your best player. I mean, a lot of people would consider this tanking to get a draft pick for next year. Do you consider it tanking? No, I think uh, what we've had to figure in what's best for the organization, like I was saying. Um, our focus is still going on and going out and competing every weekend. We, ex we expect to win. And that was the uh, coach's mindset this weekend. You know, the NFL is a, it's a business where you, you lose guys, you know, whether it's injuries, trades, whatever happens. The expectation of winning never changes. Those guys in the locker room fight too hard. They work too hard every day. So. We owe it to them. Uh, that's our expectation as an organization is to go out and win every game. How do you, how do you, how do you tell those guys um, that you're trying to win when you trade away your best player? You know, it's that's the tough part. You know, I'm not trying to tell them anything when we do that. We're doing what's best for the organization. Uh, what we tell them is, hey, the expectations haven't changed. We're going to compete. Nothing changes about Tampa this week. So that's, a, that's what we would tell them. But there's, I'm not trying to send a message by doing this, but that's, that's the expectation. Trading current assets for future assets, that obviously impacts the long-term future. But have you been given any clarity on your long-term future? My job is just to come in, do the job, what's best for the organization every day. You know, I'm not worried about my job, you know, Coach Blokes' job, anyone's job in the building. Our job is to get it right for the organization for the long term. Scott, what do you think Christian's legacy is with him? I think it's special. I think he was a, like I was saying earlier, he's an impactful guy. Just a, he's a special guy in this community. He's an absolute warrior as a player. He's everything that you want from a, from a makeup standpoint. Um, it's kind of the guy we look for. That's why it's so hard to move on from a guy like him because it's, you know, I, I understand, you know, all the factors that go into this. That was a lot of the discussion we had is like, why do we move on from this? And why we moved on is we had to do what's best for the organization. How do we get the most value? How do we build this team with the, the, the vision that we have moving forward? So that's why we did it, but it's hard. What's your favorite on-field memory? You know what? I, everybody's going to go to the games, but I think practice. 
just to see the way he practices every day, you know, finishes every run. We actually had to, you know, pull him back. He's a guy that would run, you know, 60 yards downfield. And, like, he, he's an absolute perfectionist competitor. So it's probably more the way he approaches um, every day than actual a game play. Scott, was there a communication between you and Christian, you know, when things started, you started to get offers last Friday through Tuesday? I did talk to Christian on Monday, um, you know, after the team meeting, pulled him in, just gave him a quick update because there's a lot, there's more rumors, especially about a lot of our guys for some reason, but there were more rumors out there and there was nothing really on the table. There's the one offer that was one that we didn't consider at the time. I told him that. I told him where it stood. I said, you're hearing a lot of noise. Here's what's, here's what's real. Here's what's not real. And we just had a very honest, you know, five, seven minute conversation. Um, and then after that, it picked up, like I said, on Tuesday. That's when other teams got involved and uh, talked to his agent more than him during this time because he was locked in on, on Tampa. He, once he gets into game week, he doesn't want to hear about the noise. So we communicated through the agent. His agent's an awesome guy. We talked a lot over the last you know, 48 hours and kept him in touch um, where we're at. And so uh, then I talked to Christian last night. Once we was traded, I gave him a call as like 10.30, 10.45 at night. You know, he's a guy that goes to bed early, but he was up, uh, had a really good talk with him. You know, was, thanked him for everything. Um, you know, he loves, he loves Charlotte. He's excited for the opportunity, um, but I'll let him really talk about what he wants to talk about, but he was very professional and uh, I really appreciate him. Did he tell you? Panthers general manager Scott Fitterer talking to the media following the trade of Christian McCaffrey late Thursday night says they are not tanking. They are doing what's best for the organization and they still want to win games. Panthers have lost three in a row. They face Tom Brady and the Bucks this weekend. Then they play two of their next three games against Atlanta. So they've got three big divisional games coming up. Those games bookending a trip to Cincinnati. Panthers, one of three teams with just one win this season, and they're going to be fighting, or perhaps not fighting, although Fitterer says, hey, we're not tanking, uh, to get one of these guys. C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, Will Levis, all in the running to be selected first overall in terms of the odds from Caesar Sportsbook. A quarterback is a position of need, or maybe they go defensive with a Will Anderson selection of plus 550. Safe to say that at this rate, Panthers will be in the running for one, if not all, of these players. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.